Data analytics is a process where you get raw material, which is data, and you transform it to get an outcome, a conclusion. Now, this is quite abstract, right? Let me go a bit more into the details. Analytics has four levels, descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive. It's not a flow per se, but we all start with the descriptive analytics. From there, we go to diagnostic, and then diagnostic flows into both predictive and prescriptive, which actually flow into one another. It's still a bit abstract, but let's zoom in into each of them. Descriptive analytics is a general characterization or description of the data. For example, sales increased by 10%, the company reached 20 million customers, the color of the wall is red. You use descriptive analytics if you talk about KPIs, look at reports, or visualize dashboards. Descriptive analytics answers the what question. What is happening? What are the sales? What is the number of customers? Most business intelligence tools like Tableau focus on this level. Though it is the first level, it's actually the least important because it is not insightful. It is just a characterization. Let me kick off with an example that I'll use throughout the video. Imagine that your bathroom is leaking. You are not an expert, so you call a plumber. She arrives, looks into the situation, tells you that the toilet is leaking, gives you an invoice to pay her 100 euros and goes away. I mean, what the hell? You don't need a plumber to tell you it is leaking. You can see that for yourself. That is the essence of descriptive analytics. It is events, KPIs, or metrics that anyone can know if they just look at them. Fortunately, most companies don't spend much time here, but instead on the next level. Diagnostic analytics is an understanding of causal or correlations among the KPIs or variables. It answers a why type of question. Why are sales increasing? Why are there delays in the shipping? Why is the website slow? It explains an event. One elegant way of looking into diagnostic analytics is driver trees. And let me share here one on sales. You have sales drivers like discounts, marketing, weather. They influence the traffic or footfall, the conversions, the average item value, the um, average amount of items in an order. Traffic and conversion lead to orders or volume. An average item value and the amount of items uh, per order lead to the basket. And both volume or orders and basket lead to sales. Of course, you do want to be wary of something here. Drivers are not always uh, independent. For example, if the prices of items are higher, it will influence how many items people put in their baskets and affects how many people or how many visitors convert. I'm highlighting this for you to know that driver trees are not always perfect. They're very elegant, very useful, but most often not perfect. Let's continue with the example of the plumber for diagnostic analytics. She arrives, tells you that there's a leakage, looks around, finds a reason, which apparently is a faulty pipe, and then gives you an invoice for you to pay her 100 euros. Definitely better. You now know what is happening and the cause. However, your issue is not fixed, nor do you know more about it. And this is why you need more levels or you need to go through more levels uh, in analytics. Predictive analytics is when you forecast what is going to happen. It is imperative that you have a solid diagnostic analytics supporting your predictions. If someone tells you that your company's performance is going to increase because of how the tea leaves look after you drank the tea, that is not really good uh, predictive analytics. That is a Harry Potter movie. Prediction is vital, 
uh, for companies. Knowing what will happen based on certain premises is critical for optimization. In my business school, the primary or like the main source of income is executive education for companies, which is customizable and expensive and competitive. That means that several business schools compete with each other. The proposals take a long time uh, to make and to make them also customizable. Therefore, this is what makes them really expensive. My school created a very simple model where given basic inputs, it would tell them whether they should uh, prepare and compete for that specific company's executive education program. The variables included whether they had done business before, had done some contacts, and so on. It was a simple thing, but enabled them to throw out and not waste time with bids that most likely they would not win. Staying with our leaking example, the plumber told you that it is leaking because of the poor plumbing, so the leaky pipe. Now she tells you that if nothing is done, it will continue to spread and destroy your bathroom, basically. Then she gives you an invoice and leaves. Well, now you know what is happening, the reason, and what will happen if you don't do anything. But you still don't have an idea how to fix it. And if you think about it, fixing is really the most important thing. That being said, sometimes the prediction is the end goal, which is fine. And however, most often you need to go one uh, step further into the last level of analytics. Prescriptive analytics is when the analysis tells you what you should do. Right. Very recently, I heard a character in a movie saying something like this to their employee. I don't pay you to find me problems, but solutions. Now, there are many things wrong with saying something like that to an employee, but the bottom line is that, and applying this to analytics, is that analytics should be part of the solution, not just discovering problems. The best way to find answers is really through randomized control trials or A-B tests, which we'll cover later in the course. Continuing and to wrap up our example, the plumber tells you what is happening, why it is like this, so the leaky pipe, what will happen, so destroy your bathroom, and now she tells you how to fix the problem, which is, you know, to replace uh, the leaky pipe, which apparently she can do, which is exactly what you wanted all along. To sum it up, going through the predictive or prescriptive analytics enables you to actually make use of the data, moving from insights to actions. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, have fun.